is business. I am. My name is Simba Elijah Charles Kiyaga. Thank you very much for taking your time this morning to join us on our economic review. Now, this morning, we want to talk about what was the economic package that the president did announce to go to the various sectors of the economy. And this morning, we want to trace it back to the tourism and hospitality sector but more specifically, the hotel industry in the country. All right, let's get into it, therefore. Now, workers in the tourism and hospitality sector in Western are now demanding a share of the two billion shillings um, offered uh, to the tourism and hospitality sector under the economic stimulus package to cushion them from the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Todd Unions said that, the life, that their life has become unbearable for workers in the industry since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. Trade unions state that life has become unbearable for workers in the industry. Now, the Kenya Hotel and Allied Workers Union, Nyanza Chairman Daniel Okumu, decried the state of handling of the funds, which he says have not been remitted to hotels five months after the government pledged after the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. In May, the president, Uhuru Kenyatta, announced that two billion shillings will be set aside to support the renovation of the tourism facilities and the restructuring of business operations in the industry. Latest Kenya National Bureau of Statistics data indicate that the hospitality and tourism sector contracted 83.3% in quarter two in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic that saw the government take unprecedented measures that included lockdowns and tough curfews. All right, to help us this morning understand where we're coming from on this and what has been the effect of the coronavirus pandemic on the hotel industry in Kenya, we are joined by Michael Masharia, the CEO Kenya Association of Hoteliers, and John Thiongo, the CEO Mavericks Restaurants, Sio Kimau. All right, just before we get to that, let's see what is the biggest contributor in terms of employment wage in the country between the private sector and the public sector. When it comes to that hotel industry, you're going to see from the data that we have for you on the screen that all the way from 2015 to 2019, up to 2020 where we're right now, we did see that the private sector is the one that contributes majority or everything, I would say more than 90% of the employment wage in the country. Meaning that when it comes to addressing these issues that we're talking about this morning, we are basically talking about the private sector. Good morning. All right. Now, let's ask the first question on the alpha. What should be the best way to approach the package distribution and what criteria ought to be implemented? Mr. Thiongo, I want to start with you this morning. How should the government have approached this issue for a stimulus package in your industry? Uh, thank you very much and uh, uh, happy to be on uh, your show to today. I must say as a prayer that in this industry that uh, when uh, the president announced the stimulus package of uh, 3 billion area in May, we were all very excited because as you know, we were hard hit. Perhaps we were the most hard hit sector of the economy by COVID. And so when the stimulus package was announced, we were quite excited that finally we had the lifeline that would enable us to have our comeback uh, sooner and uh, in, in an easier way. But um, as, as you have uh, highlighted, the sector is yet to feel the impact of this stimulus package. Indeed, for a lot of us in the industry, we are yet to even get the chance to apply. And maybe just to give you a bit of a background, uh, once it was announced, uh, the organization or the government agency that was tasked with uh, disbursing the funds is the Tourism Tourist Finance Corporation, the TFC. And um, they were required or they set up the protocols and uh, uh, promised that uh, uh, the players in the industry will be getting soft loans uh, whose interest rate was to be 5% uh, with a grace period of 6 to 12 months, repayable in five years up to 10 years. And, and, and that was very exciting because that was a very good alternative to the commercial banks 
which are more expensive uh, with very tight uh, uh, terms. But the challenge has been accessing that because uh, we understand that we were to start accessing that money from last month of September. Uh, I understand that TFC opened the portal for 21 days, uh, starting from 22nd of September to 12th of October. Uh, that was a very small window. The, the awareness campaign was not uh, adequate, adequately done to even let as many stakeholders, as many hotel owners, as many restaurant owners to even know that it was already learning. Uh, and therefore that was perhaps one of the things from right from the onset that could have been done better. But here we are. Uh, I think that uh, uh, the, 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 the criteria should have been set in such a way that it is not too tight, is not too rigid, uh, and, and so that the common um, prayer in this industry can be able to fully participate in it. So those have been, have been some of the challenges. Yes. We are grappling with a lot of us are yet to be able to access the fund, so to speak, because the bid was too small and they have now locked the portal for the prayers to, to come in. Pretty much. I'm going to come to you, uh, Mr. Thiongo, this morning, so we know what the exact effect has been. But let me just bring in the CEO of Kenya Association of Hoteliers. Mr. Masharia, the first question for you this morning is going to be, how could the government know who needs what? And do you think that everybody in the industry did need some sort of cushioning? And also, let's start with these two billion shillings. Was it enough to take your players out of the hole that the COVID-19 pandemic put themselves in? Uh, thank you very much, Wilson. I think uh, we, we need to look at the government's uh, action in totality. Uh, when the pandemic broke out, uh, we were part of the, uh, of, of the teams that were developing uh, some of these uh, requests to government. And, and we went out with a huge raft of, uh, of requests uh, under the umbrella of Kenya Tourism Federation. Yes. And the first thing we asked government is uh, we said, uh, give us a reprieve on, uh, on value-added tax. Uh, give us a, a reprieve on pay as you earn. Uh, reduce the, the central bank uh, uh, rate uh, for lending. Reduce the cash reserve ratio. Uh, and we got all this. Uh, for the first time in history, uh, the government gave reduced value-added tax by 2%. Uh, they reduced uh, pay as you earn by 5%. Uh, and also uh, 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 the, the lower end bracket uh, were given a full tax relief uh, in terms of employees. Uh, the central bank monetary policy met uh, twice in an unprecedented move and reduced the cash reserve ratio twice in one month. Uh, and, and they reduced the, the central bank rate, the, the CBR, which meant that uh, a lot of money was freed uh, into uh, industry for restructuring their loans. That action alone released uh, 35 billion to the industry. And that 35 billion did not even last two weeks. It was utilized in two weeks. So you can imagine the kind of, uh, uh, the kind of uh, money that we'll be talking about uh, in, in, in order to jumpstart the economy. We are the ones, same people who ask the government, uh, give us salary support, uh, give us uh, uh, support to, uh, to keep our people employed because one of the deals that we made is that we would keep our people employed for, for about four or five months yes. uh, out of our own uh, reserves. So, uh, and we crafted all these things and took uh, this to Treasury and took it to the president himself. Uh, then the president came back and said, look, uh, out of all these things that you've requested, uh, here is what I'm going to do. And uh, he announced uh, the, the, everything that we had requested for, including uh, a, a circular to review uh, government meetings uh, taking place in, uh, in non-government hotels and, uh, and the stimulus package. Now, that stimulus package is uh, where we are coming to now. Yes. Uh, so that uh, we should not just think about the stimulus package. Let's think, up, think about everything in totality. This package uh, is crafted as, uh, as uh, it's actually 5 billion shillings. Eh? 
uh, there is a component of 3 billion uh, to the hotel industry, and there's a component of uh, 2 billion to the conservancies. And you remember even uh, the park, park fees were reduced by Kenya Wildlife Service yes. through the Ministry of Tourism. So our component of uh, 3 billion is uh, what we, we got. In fact, we got a billion more than, than uh, had been announced uh, when the, the budget estimates came out. Now, take the 2 billion shillings as an example. Uh, and I hear the cry of, uh, of, uh, of uh, the employees uh, all over. It's not only in Nyanza, it's all over. Nairobi, there is no business. Yes. If you, if, you, if you listen to the cry of the employees, they're saying, give us this money. Uh, a physical count revealed that we have 3.1 million people employed in the industry directly. Take 2 billion and divide by 3.1 million. You'll end up with about 600 shillings uh, per employee if it was going to go straight into people's pocket as, as, a, as a cash transfer, uh, it would cost you more uh, to transfer 645 uh, shillings to 3.1 million people. So that's not the most prudent way of using that money. Let's take the industry. And I'll take hotels alone without even uh, coming to, to the restaurants where, where Mr. Diongo represents. Yes. We have 7,000. Uh, licensed hotels. If you take again two billion and divide by seven thousand, you end up with two hundred and forty something thousand per unit. Hardly enough to even support salaries uh, for one month. Uh, if you bring in the restaurants, bring in the pubs. Uh, Nairobi alone has ten thousand uh, registered pubs. Uh, Kisumu is around uh, eight thousand. If you combine Mombasa, Kilifi, and uh, and Diani, you're talking about seven thousand. So you can see that uh, it, it's not really uh, the kind of money that you'd be talking about uh, dividing. Uh, so what I believe the ministry did is uh, they, they said for the first phase, uh, because there are products that, uh, that need renovation, let them access this money, renovate their, their properties uh, at uh, a reasonable interest rate, which is 5% uh, on reducing balance. It's actually a very, very good rate. Yes. I know that uh, CS Balala and the team were trying to organize a launch so that uh, they can, you know, uh, they, they, they can inform the people and sensitize the public. Uh, but that uh, has not happened yet. So now we are sitting with the, the first tranche, which has been released. I, I believe uh, the first tranche is about 1.5 billion shillings. Uh, it's been released to the Tourism Finance Corporation. And uh, I think from what I, I hear, I don't have uh, uh, the, the, the figures uh, correctly, but from what I, I, I hear is that uh, we haven't even uh, applied for that 1.5 billion shillings. I think we've, we've, we've just applied for about uh, 700 or 800 million so far. Yes. So, so there's a bit of, uh, of, uh, of a disconnect which we'll talk about. Pretty uh, much. I'm, I'm going to come back to you on that disconnect. Now, let's go back yes. to, I'm, I'm going to come to you, uh, Mashari, on that disconnect. Let's go back to Theonga this morning. Yes. I mean, when we're talking about what the direct effect has been in your industry, uh, Theonga, would you leave for me a picture of what is happening in your restaurants, in what's going on? Are you back to fully operating? Are we talking about... What is the percentage of your operations right now? Um, well, business is coming back slowly. Yes. But nowhere near where we were in March when uh, we all closed our businesses. Um, a good number of the restaurants and the hotels are back. Yes. But I would say only up to around 40% uh, uh, thereabout of what the business that we were doing in March. Uh, so despite the, the relaxing of the restrictions, we are far from uh, recovery. Yes. Uh, a lot of uh, restaurants and hotels have opened only with a, around a third of the employees that they had uh, before COVID. Yes. And so you can see that the, the impact is still very big. The sales are low, uh, the bookings are still low, uh, the employees, the bulk of them are still either at home or back with uh, pay cuts. And that is the reality in the industry. Yes. And, uh, and therefore, talking about one of the things that uh, I think need to be done urgently 
is that uh, there's, they, there's need for a sense of urgency because now it's five months later and you can see uh, most likely none of the businesses have received the stimulus package. But, so I think this is one package or program that need to be done with a sense of urgency. Otherwise, some of the businesses may never be back. Yes. Can, can, I, just, can I just get a confirmation from you, um, I think, of this morning, that you have actually applied for some sort of relief under the package? I personally have not applied because by the time I was... I asked about it before they opened the portal. There's a portal, it's a non online application. So there's a portal in the TFC website. Yes. When I asked about it, I actually went to the office. They hadn't opened the portal. Yes. The next time I got to know about it, the portal had been opened and closed because there were so many applications. Yes. So we are waiting for the portal to reopen. And a lot of us are waiting. All right. So I, I have I haven't gotten the because the advertisements were not done uh, in, in, in a way that was was uh, uh, sufficient enough. Yes. And the portal was only open for a limited and then it was crossed. Yes. Um, Fiona, let me just ask you this question. As the CEO of a Maverick restaurant, what, were you, what, what area do you think you're going to take this money into should you get it right now? What, what has been the effect so far? Uh, number one is that uh, I think this money will be very useful, at, at least in my case, uh, for innovations, uh, yes. because you know our industry requires us to upgrade the facilities every other time, almost every other year, yes. at least to have the right ambience and good room for clients. So th that is one purpose that I think uh, would, would come in handy. Uh, number two is uh, just to help reorganize the business operations uh so 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 that we can be more efficient and more responsive uh to clients and uh of course number three is uh to contribute towards the COVID related expenses because we've opened businesses but there, there is a completely new cost that we did operational cost so to speak both the capital cost and operational cost that is related to COVID uh that, that was not uh part of our business structure before before March. Uh, and so those those are the three major areas, uh, renovations and upgrade, uh, number two, the restructuring uh, of the business operations, and then coffee-related expenses. Pretty much. Let me therefore cross over to Masharia this morning. Now, Masharia, I mean, we're talking about a disconnect here. I mean, look at look at Thiongo is saying, if, if I'm told you're going to give me something, then it has to go into renovations, reorganizing business operations, and contribute towards COVID-19 related expenses. Is that what we didn't understand first as a government before saying, well, we have two Two billion for you guys to come in and apply for because from the disconnect will start from understanding how much it is that we need and then giving us the exact value that is going to cover these expenses but from where you're sitting this morning i think the disconnect starts from here don't you think so sir uh first of all the, the if you look at the general economic uh, yes. outlook before covid uh we, we were struggling uh, as an economy so when, when COVID hit us, uh, it made things worse. Uh, and it was, uh, it, it, it really was not uh, uh, possible for us to expect that the, the government would, uh, would come up with stimulus packages similar to those that we were seeing in the West, yes. uh, where people were actually getting money directly into their accounts. Yes, but Masharia, uh, we, just, just uh, yeah. sorry to cut you there, but yeah. for a bigger sector like tourism, and hospitality, yes. which has been contributing, yeah. the, the, which has been generally the biggest contributor to our GDP. Don't you think that the government would have treated it with some sort of a seriousness that it deserves? I, I think it did. I think would, it did. Would you but, say uh, so much, look Aria, at, from where you're sitting this look morning? At how, look at how much you need. Uh, and I'll give you the numbers because yes. we, 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 we pick them from our members. Yes. Uh, 20, 25, uh, 35%. Uh, of our expenses go to payroll, 35 percent. So if uh, if we made 100 billion last year, which is what we think we did, we would need uh, just to start off 35 billion shillings. Yes. But that's what we did, just to support salaries. 
if you if you look at uh, renovations, for example, uh, a good uh, four or five star facility to bring it up to uh, up to date uh, with with the with the required standards, you would need not less than uh, six hundred to seven hundred million shillings. Yes. So if if you divide that uh, that money, you'll see that you, you'll only get about uh, four or five hotels uh, applying. Uh, because it is expensive. Some of these uh, uh, constructions are expensive. Yes. So generally, the the two billion shillings, uh, in my view, I don't think would have been enough to cater for everybody's needs. Uh, the government needed to come up with a, a higher uh, stimulus package if uh, the plan was to give people free money. Uh, but this is money that uh, is a loan. So other things come into play, other aspects come into play. Ability to pay. Uh, are you up to date with your, with your tax returns, for example? Are you up to date with your levy returns, uh, for example? So you, you find that uh, there's a lot of uh, 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 the process to access uh, uh, requires you to be compliant with a lot of other with a lot of other areas. Yes. So I don't personally think that uh, that money is enough. But as the old adage goes, you, you make do with what you have. If we are able to pick that money and utilize it, then probably we can go back to government and, and, and request for a bit more uh, for the next uh, consideration. Because uh, there, there are many budgets that take place. There is uh, uh, the Finance uh, Act of, uh, of next year. We could still go back and request for more. But we do need to exhaust what we've been given first. Yes, Masharia, quickly add that therefore. I mean, what we have is two billion shillings, well, directly into the hotel industry, yes. fine. And and other yes. measures you will say that we took in the economy, like the, the reduction of corporate tax pay as well and VAT reduction. Yes. What would you tell me has been the effect of all this together? Because I'm going to go back to Theongo and then talk about a report that was released by CBK that shows that, well, employment again in the hotel industry has gone up by almost, um, by, by almost 19% from 35% if we go back to August. Would you say that this has helped this, the, the, the industry? Uh, you know, Wilson, the, the, some of these uh, terminologies yes. can be a bit confusing. For, for a, a typical guy in the street, a hotel is a hotel, even the one that sells tea and mandazi. Yes. So, you know, uh, we, we need to start separating what is a hotel. And there is a, there is a very clear definition of a hotel in the, in the Tourism Act under Schedule 9. Uh, there is a Class A facilities, which are hotels. There is Class B facilities, which are restaurants. And there's classy and, and, and it goes on and on and on. Yes. Now, if you're talking about employment in, in the hotels, in class A facilities, that has definitely not gone up because yes. we don't have the business. Uh, Mr. Diongo spoke about 40% uh, uh, rates uh, of, uh, of occupancy. Uh, that's uh, extremely good for a, a sector that's uh, uh, completely shut down. Uh, if you take Nairobi, for example, we cannot even command an occupancy of more than 10% in any of the major hotels in Nairobi. Uh, we cannot command uh, more than 20% uh, on average uh, at the coast, even though Kenyans are, are, are traveling to the coast. Uh, you remember Masai Mara was busy during the migration, uh, during the school holiday in August. Now things have gone back uh, to zero. So our industry is actually completely uh, down on its knees. And, and uh, what we need to do uh, on top of the stimulus package is to find ways of getting the business back. Yes. Because even if we get uh, this money as a loan and we don't have the business to support the repayment, it will all be uh, you know, an exercise in futility. Pretty so much. we need to start a conversation of how do we get this business back. All right, let me just cross over to Theongo this morning. Now, Theongo, well, the CBK, seems, the CBK seems to think that things are actually turning around, especially in your sector. Would you talk to me? Have you increased the number of clients that you're seeing in the past one month? And have you actually needed more employees to come back and help in uptown? I would say in a, a short turnaround in, in, in your industry. 
Well, um, to be fair is to say that uh, since the restrictions were isn't, yes. they will come back. I, I cautiously use the word come back here. It's a very slow comeback. Yes. I think most, I, I can speak for the restaurants, uh, especially like in Nairobi, most of them are back in operation. I know most of the ones I know have perhaps taken back around 30% yes. of the uh, meaning that there is a whole 70% out there that is yet to come back. Uh, I, I, I will not be very um, rosy with figures in terms of the amount of businesses that has come back. As I say, perhaps if it goes very high, it's 40%. So there's still a lot of employees out there. It is not the wish of any of the restaurants or the businesses in this sector to have their employees out there because we've invested a lot in their training and mm. the, um, understanding of this industry. But we would uh, appreciate that uh, we are doing what we, we could do best. But a lot, a lot is still out there. And, and they saw that I think the prayers in the industry can do. But going back uh, a bit, uh, to what uh, Mr. Masharia is saying, I, I completely agree that we need to have a new conversation, a completely new conversation about what was intended with uh, all the initiatives that government had set out for, for this industry. We need to have a new conversation in terms of the impact of those new um, interventions and how much we are getting out of that I think uh, we need to rethink and recalibrate uh, around those issues. One thing for me that needs to be done is that we need to relax the whole bureaucracy around uh, execution of those programs, including the stimulus program. Because if a lot of the prayers are not uh, feeling the impact of that, maybe we need to think about it. Because five months later, if we've not uh, felt the impact, uh, then it means that we need to have thought about the, perhaps the process and all that. But number two is also uh, with, with a new normal where we are not getting tourists. We used to get out two, min, two million tourists coming into the country. Right now, I'm sure we are very off the numbers that were set for this year. Perhaps we need to start thinking about local tourism and, and providing a substantive uh, incentives to for local tourism as we gear up towards November, December, which is a peak for local tourism. And, and But also going back, back to the stimulus package, look at the portal and, and you'll be amazed at the number of requirements that have been set out right there. Yes. Most treat what you get from a commercial bank. Yes. Uh, first requirement has around 20 uh, boxes to tick in terms of uh, criteria followed by a lot of others. Most of the Kenyan businesses would be hard pressed to even comply with the criteria for this stimulus package. So I, I agree with Masharia that perhaps we do need to sit back, go back mm -hmm. to the table and rethink how we are going to uh, inject energy and momentum back to this sector. Pretty much. Masharia, help us close this conversation this morning, therefore. When do we expect a turnaround in this sector? And could you could you paint a period and could you paint the things that we need to look at that will be proper indicators that yes, this if it happens now, that we do expect a turnaround at this quarter or at this year in this sector in general. We, two minutes, if you may. Okay, there, there, there are many things, uh, Simba, that uh, come into play. First yes. of all, uh, we have the external, uh, uh, the, the, the external environment, uh, the macro environment. If you look at our key source markets right now, uh, they're experiencing a spike in, in uh, COVID numbers. Yes. That is uh, the US, the, the UK, France, uh, Germany and the rest of the EU. Now, what has happened is that uh, they, they are telling their citizens, if you leave and come back, you must go on a 14 day quarantine. Uh, on their second phase of uh, stimulus, they've stopped paying people for nothing. Uh, initially during lockdown, they were paying 80% of salaries to their citizens and they were even paying money into, into their businesses. 
Now, if you go on holiday or on business and come back and are quarantined and you're not working, you're not paid. So you're already uh, 14, 14 days out of work. So that means uh, the numbers are being discouraged yes. from our key source markets. Yes. Uh, we, we, we had uh, worked, uh, we, we, we actually work very closely now with Kenyatta University. Uh, there is a department there that uh, uh, conducts research on tourism. And we give them all these uh, research problems and they, and they come up with the data and, and tell us how to approach. The first uh, thing that we did is when we did the first exercise with uh, KU, we got a four-step approach. And, they, and, they, and, and we were told, you start with domestic. Uh, the recovery starts with domestic. Uh, and, and domestic does not, mean, uh, does not mean the entire country. It just means consumption locally, where you are, within the places that, that you yeah, are. So I'm if you Kisi, consume there. If you're in Nairobi, consume there in Mombasa and so on and so forth. Then the next step would be now inter-county. Yes. Uh, that's now what, what uh, uh, Bonadiongo is uh, referring to as local tourism, which supplies us uh, in numbers uh, up to about uh, 40% of our total numbers in, in a year. So we still have a 60% gap to fill. We need to think about Africa very critically uh, because uh, travel to Africa, you try to go to Mozambique uh, even before COVID, it would take you about three, four days, uh, while you can go uh, to China uh, in, in 12 hours. So we need to think critically about Africa, uh, the northern side, the southern side, and, and East Africa, because we are doing a lot of work in East Africa. Then, of course, the external source markets. So to answer your question, uh, for as long as uh, the numbers are spiking in the key source markets, we will still continue struggling to attract uh, tourists here because they can't go back in quarantine. So we, we are looking at probably the second half of next year for any movement to start happening. And this is highly dependent on, on, on something that is uh, not being spoken about as much. Uh, and this is uh, medical interventions. Uh, we, we've been uh, under this uh, situation for about six months now. Uh, and there is no real medical intervention that we've seen out there. People are talking about vaccines. Uh, we should be talking about cure because the numbers tell us that uh, only about 4% of the tested ones become positive. So would you rather cure 4% or, or inject 100% uh, of the people with a vaccine that is unknown? So we also need to challenge uh, the, 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 the guys in the medical fraternity and the scientists uh, to start coming up with interventions because uh, we cannot continue with lockdowns. The, the virus is already in the communities. We can't, we, we can't really stop it. We can slow it down, but we need some sort of intervention. Pretty thank much, you. Mr. Masharia. Thank you very much. This morning, we were speaking to Michael Masharia, CEO, Kenya Association of Hoteliers, and John Fiolo, the CEO of Mavericks Restaurants, Siokimau, just painting a picture on what the economic package that was directed towards this industry has done so far and also painting a picture on the general effect of COVID-19 pandemic on the tourism and hospitality sector in the country. This is Business I Am.